And then, 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 do the breakdown. Breakdown! Yeah! <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to First Impressions. This is Twin Peaks, episode six. And we are, we are, uh, we, we, we learned a new dance from this episode. <laughs> Poor Laura Palma's father. Poor he, Leland. His, his, his therapy of going out into public and just cry dancing is just oh, not he's working was, for him. He was doing pretty well up until that point. He had this look on his face when he entered the, that one scene like, okay, I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to stay focused. I'm not going to break down. Yeah. I'm going to reintroduce myself as a viable member of society. Yeah. And then the music came on and just, nope. No. Oh, what just crap. Oh dear. Oh yeah, so before we before we go any further, actually, uh, I should quickly acknowledge that a couple of facts I stated um, a couple episodes ago and then the last episode were actually not correct, and I was corrected on these facts. Uh, it's that, just, that's on you guys, it's not me because... Oh no, 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 it's, I, again, this was just stuff that a friend told me, and then <laughs> uh, I just took it at face value, much like you would a Wikipedia page, so I should not have. Uh, it, it was it's most, hard enough for me to get, keep up with what's going stuff, on anyway. Uh, about when David Lynch. Oh, like, like show, real world stuff. Like real world stuff, and maybe, um, and how much Mark Frost was involved. It's mm -hmm. like not just a David Lynch production. We keep doing, bringing up David Lynch's name, mm -hmm. and it, it was a it was a collaboration. Okay, so fair enough. Fair that's enough. one of those like I you know so. Um, next time I shall try and prepare properly for those things. So for now, I'm just going to focus on the episode. Yeah, and, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough. And, and do my gut reaction. Speaking of like the, uh, the Icelandic uh, people, the opening scene of them doing their singing and waking oh, Cooper yeah! up. yeah! That was amazing. First thing that struck me and everything, and this is because that one scene that I remember in a previous episode where he woke up with his super slick hair all sticking up. Whenever. Yeah. He didn't do that this time. He woke up, his hair was all slicked over. I'm just thinking, does he go to bed at night with like a billion gallons of gel in his hair he like must. like he must get his linens done every single day because all the gel left on his pillow or something yeah. um oh yeah and i think this is great because this is the first time ever i think that we've seen cooper kind of lose his patience and his which is aw which is awesome considering that elsewhere in the episode we have a sit down with log lady yeah and there is an abundance of patience with her because oh not not Really though, not with him, not at first. And when he comes in, like, yeah, he kind of wants to know the details and everything. But it's, yeah. it's it's obviously yeah. it's Log Lady and the the locals. They're all just like, no, 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 just no, let no, her just let her do her thing. Let her make the tea. Don't take the cookies. <laughs> Ask the log. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and he sort of picks up on that. And he's like, okay, I can get along with that and everything. But yeah, like yeah. you said, when it comes to the Icelandic people and they're singing and everything. Uh, there was a scene near the end where they started singing up and he just rolls his eyes and everything and then he goes to go to a room with like oh. his gun drawn <laughs> and it turns out it's his room and he's just yeah. alarmed because yeah. he thinks somebody's brought, busted in. I honestly thought he was going to talk to the to the people singing with like his gun out and I'm like, oh <laughs> crap, he really doesn't like their singing. Yeah, so there were quite a few developments this episode. Yeah, it was an episode for developments. It wasn't so much an episode for stuff jumping out at me at least and being all like, I'm weird. Yeah. Still. No, it was, there was a lot of like furthering of the various different plots. Um, yeah, like Bobby and the uh, and uh, his little affair with what's her name uh, is developing, where he's oh, like, oh yeah, Shelley, yeah. He, he, they're very much into it and everything, and to a creepy degree because there's a lot of he's gun been... waving around. Oh yeah, like at the beginning, he's just like kind of role playing and pretending that Leo's in front of him being like, you better not, you know, say anything mean to Shelly here. But when he's doing it, he's like, you better not say anything mean to Shelly because she's awesome. And I'm just like, do you really want to point the gun at her? <laughs> I mean, yeah, there was that um, scene and then the scene shortly after that where he's with his family in with the therapist. With the therapist. Who, who proves, just basically cracks him in half immediately. Like yeah, he sends the parents out. Yeah, a pretty competent therapist. Well, he might have his own ulterior motives for asking Bobby the questions yeah. he does. But at the same time, like Bobby just completely breaks down and opens up and, yeah. and uh, the therapist just sort of walks away like, my job's done here. <laughs> well, he either, you know, thinks he did the job right or at least he got what he wanted to know out of it yeah. and that was that. We also have the, um, I guess the, the mill people. We have Catherine and Josie. Uh, I'm still kind of lost on what the whole subplot of them is. Like, there's, I think there's it's a, that one of the ones... some sort of corporate espionage of one of them trying to sabotage the mill to get 
some money out of it or something I like that. I don't think know. What so that one's a bit more complicated. I know one of them uh, is well, Josie inherited the mill, yeah. right? Um, and and Catherine's upset about that, and so she wants Josie to sell the mill. But okay. Josie will not sell the mill. And so she's just more preoccupied sitting in dark rooms looking like a bomb yeah. filler. <laughs> so I, I love this. So you know, like when you watch TV shows. And every time, like, somebody will enter a room and somebody's sitting there, and in, in the back of your mind, you're like, how long were they sitting there? What's great about this episode is that... <laughs> they actually show you how long this person... three times, three times, to show Josie sitting in the room, in the shadows, smoking a cigarette, waiting for, um... Ben, ben to show up. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I gotta laugh at it every single time it cut to her. She's just she's in the dark, smoking like rear window sort of style. I'm just there like she's like, oh man, she looks like a villain. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a bit of development there. So what you find out is that Ben, the hotel owner, is actually because you thought you think that he's working with Catherine to working Joe. with <laughs> working with you. Yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and. And then you find out he's also doing the same with Josie. So he's double dipping. He's, he's pretty much playing dipping. both sides, really. Yeah, so you're not sure which side he's more actually with. Yeah. Um, Cooper and the sheriff, are they still hot on the trail of uh, what's going on with... Yeah, they're trying to... F oh, yeah, that was, this was like the overarching one. So they're, they're kind of honing in on One-Eyed Jacks now. Oh, that's because right, yeah. they found another poker they're, chip. They're, 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 like, I love their crime scene investigation protocols. It has to have, like, glazed donuts always oh, abundant. Yeah, they were, like, contaminating the crime scene with glaze. Like, they're, like searching through the, they're searching through this place with gloves on, no less. And then, you know, out of nowhere, out of frame, a gigantic overflowing plate of glazed donuts is just dropped down. And they're, like, grabbing, and they're just them grabbing them it. And hand. Cooper, of course, you know, every bite he takes out of it, he looks like he's having an orgasm. Yeah, yeah. Because he just loves his food <laughs> he loves so his much. Food. And then they're lo they were looking for uh, Jean Renault, I think. Jean Renault, yeah. And they, they pretty much surmised that he's probably murdered. Oh, okay. And so we have our prime suspect. And now. they also found out that he. Um, that he contacted people through magazine letters like this. Oh uh, yeah, they were like. I looking think that's how it worked. <laughs> all that all we were concerned about was how where where was that magazine? Yeah, because the, the, they set the scene up where Cooper is just like they're looking around. Cooper starts looking up. We never ever see what he's looking at. And he gets up and everything. He pulls the magazine down from top of the screen. I'm just like, where did that magazine come where from? Where was it? And well, like when everybody if else it was somewhere up. up high that he was able to get from, you would think somebody else would have looked up and seen it. You were laughing at there was a shot uh, that happened happens twice, which is um, oh, Cooper right, comes yeah. into frame looking profile at something and then everybody else Like all in a row, in like in, it looked like some cheesy 80s album cover of some like yeah. synth band or something like that where it's just all their faces in profile one after the yeah. other. And they do that not once but twice in the episode. <laughs> and I thought it was the best thing ever because you would never see a shot like that at contemporary television, yeah. ever. The episode kind of wrapped up with two rather huge you know, shocker reveals. First of all was the encounter between Leo when he came home right. and his wife. Right. Because yeah. she's <laughs> she's sitting there waiting for him to come home. She's just sitting at the kitchen table with the gun sitting in yeah. front of her. <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, she looks like she wants she's trying to figure out how she's gonna eat the thing. Yeah. And then, then he comes home and you know, he gets assaulted by who the hell was it that came up on him? Norma's husband, Hank. That's Hank? right. Uh, Hank's who, who's on parole now. He's kind of stirring up shit in the town. Oh, okay. Town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the guy who was eavesdropping. Oh, when, right. <laughs> when the, um, oh, there's so much that happens in these episodes. <laughs> this is why these vlogs are long. It's yeah. Just like unpacking these things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he was eavesdropping on a conversation between James, Laura, Laura's cousin and, and Donna. Yeah. Uh, Maddie. Maddie's Laura's Maddie. cousin. So. And they're all trying to solve Flora's murder themselves, so they get Maddie to look through her room and she found a tape. She did find something yeah. and she found a tape and we got a little snippet of that. Yeah. But, but anyway, getting back to, you Hank. know, Hank, he, he, he basically beats the hell out of Leo for yeah. like, I guess, like stepping out of rank or everything like yeah. that in the whole drug dealing business. Mm -hmm. So Leo, having all, being all busted up, goes inside and decides to take his frustration out on Wifey because he's the fun, loving, wonderful husband that he is. But she's been all emboldened by, you know, Bobby putting all this crazy in gun talk in her yeah. head. So she gets slapped around everything. She draws on Leo, fires, and we never actually see whether or we not it hits. We don't know what happened. 
happens. It's basically, oh god, I've been struggling. Fire waterfall. What? What? <laughs> so that was the sec. That was like the penultimate big what the heck scene. And then the very last scene of the episode was Cooper going back to his room, going inside and finding a little surprise for him. And uh, Zadri sitting there waiting for him, who's now also working at the perfume counter at her father's department store. Oh yeah, after she like scumbaggingly seduces the yep. hiring agent. Yep. I don't know. It oh, was... by the way, yeah, someone also explained the uh, the age difference. Um, because mm -hmm. Audrey's 18, and Cooper apparently is like maximum 25 years old. Wow. So to be an FBI agent at 25. <laughs> no, that's what I thought too. I was like, holy. Only crap. in a David Lynch story. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, that's we left off on the cliffhanger. So we were about to watch the next one. Yes, it was we are. Amazing. All right, thanks, guys, and we will catch you soon. Bye.